I'm feeling pretty good because we're halfway through the semester and I've covered one verse. <laughs> Which is better than I did in the Gospel of John. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Psalm 1. Blessed, we'll just start at the first here. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. <clears throat> but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. <clears throat> so the first verse is <clears throat> that you are blessed, not for the good things you do, but for the bad things that you avoid. Which is interesting, because usually most of Christianity, we're always thinking about the good things that we can do, you know what I mean? And that's what's going to get us over and uh, hi, Mike. <clears throat> and uh, and so we're all wrapped up in good works and doing good things and this and that. But again, there is this uh, walking not, this uh, standing not, uh, this sitting not. The last one we talked about was sitting in the seat of the scornful, and of course this. To sit in the seat in, in the Bible times meant that you spoke as an authority. And they were, they were an instructor to people. But in verse 2, we begin to shift the emphasis more to the positive again. And it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Um, he's not under the law. I'll, I'm going to say it like this. <clears throat> he's not under the law, but he's in the law. Now, the law of the Lord is the word of God. You understand that. So, so he's not under the law. He's in the law. He's in the word of God. And uh, he's uh, not only in it, but he is delighting in it as a rule of his life. And the reason why I say that, the reason why I can even make that statement is because He's just said in verse 1, these things that have become the rule of certain people's life, or certainly, if not the rule of their life, then they are influenced by them. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, he's not really even, you know, trying to correct the scornful or whatever. He just says they are what they are, but blessed is the man who doesn't go and sit with them. Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in that counsel and that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, so I believe that, that verse 2 is in relationship to a rule of your life. And when I say a rule of your life, I don't mean rules that govern your life. I mean how your life is ruled or ordered. Does that make sense? Because that, you know, these things are important, and, and it's interesting that this is the first psalm in the first two verses, you know. <clears throat> so, um, and then it says that he delights to meditate, to read it by day, to think upon it by night. Um, when I was thinking about this, I wrote down a little statement. I thought, how is it that some can claim to be the righteous, but they sit among the scornful? And they don't delight in the word in that they are not in it day and at night. Is that a good statement? <laughs> I mean, how, how, how can they claim to, but we, but let me just say this. Uh, who is it? Uh, Kelly, are you the one teaching Proverbs? Um, she may have already said this. It's something I've, I've said for years, and that is... <clears throat> That we read the Proverbs and it says, the righteous man doeth so and so, but the wicked man, da 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 da. And we always immediately read that we're the righteous one. I mean, it's just automatic. But Jesus is the one that's righteous there. 
and we're the wicked, actually. <laughs> unless we're in him, unless we're in union with him, that's us. You know, the only hope we have is Jesus. Can I get amen for that one? I mean, the only hope I have, I, don't, I honestly don't know about you. You may be so good that you don't have any problem. But I know in my life, if I don't have Jesus, and I don't just mean as a savior for, for the future someday when I die. I mean right now, if I don't have Jesus, it would be a little bit like saying, if I didn't have the sun come up, I would be in darkness forever. And that's a true saying. It's a true saying. Man, I need the Lord. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I'm never ashamed to admit that. And I'm also not ashamed to admit that if you see any good thing in me, it is the Lord. And if you see any bad thing in me, it's either me or it could be Christ and you don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? I mean, I, I mean I, that's, and that's not just true of me. That's true of you too. I'm just saying we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. And we have to, we have to learn, well, I'm telling you the truth. <clears throat> so anyway, I just, I just thought, how is it? How, how, how is it that we can claim this? And I, I mean, I'm, and I meant that sincerely. So here's what I came up with. We can claim this because something in us automatically says we're on God's side. But that's a generic reality. What, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, is that generically we're with God, but there are specifics, like here the specific isn't, you know, you know, I don't walk with the ungodly. I don't sit with the scornful people who say bad stuff. I don't, I don't do that. Therefore, I must be this next guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a, it's like, well, if I'm going to be in here at all, I'm not this bad guy. So this has to be me. I mean, I'm just trying to, these, are, I'm trying to think through at least my thought processes of why I automatically jump on the bandwagon of something that may not be true of me. Number one, maybe I don't delight in the law of the Lord. Maybe I don't delight in the word of God. Maybe I don't really like, I mean, I remember when I was in Bible school I didn't delight in the Word of God. I didn't. When I first started in Bible school, I didn't delight. It was, it was a pain to me. It was, it was, I didn't get it, you know. And I, I can even say mainly before Bible school. I remember, I remember saying, okay, I'm going to just start in the New Testament and read straight through. And I'm going to get Jesus. Uh, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. So and so begat. So and so begat. In, in one chapter, so and so begat. I can't even pronounce the names. You know, Eager blue begat. Lot of blue and lock and no. You know, and I'm just going. You know, and after a while, I just went. Is that really all there is to this? No. Now, I will tell you this. Later on, God revealed not specifically in that genealogy, but as a whole, an incredible reality that opened my eyes to Jesus. But it takes the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit to do that. <clears throat> and so, you know, uh, but, but we have to examine ourselves uh, in light of the word. In other words, um, and you heard me say this, I think, fairly recently, but it was a true fact bunch of us in Bible school were sitting around and, and, and uh, some were, you know, talking about, oh man, I've really been searching the scriptures and I found so-and-so. And another one said, oh, I've really been searching the scriptures and I found so-and-so. And at the time, I was really going through a hard time. Personally, I felt like I was falling short and I felt like God was revealing that to me. And so when they sort of came to me, they said, what about you? You've been searching the scriptures? Where have you been searching the scriptures at? And I said, man, I haven't been searching the scriptures. They've been searching me. Yeah. And I mean, just <laughs> breaking me down. And just, oh, Lord, you know, just, oh, man, you know. <clears throat> you, 
letting the word of God deal with me, letting the word of God, for example, say to me. So do you really delight in the word of God? Oh, yeah. Oh, baby, yeah. I mean, I'd have to. I go to Acts Bible School. There couldn't be any possible way I don't delight in the law of the Lord. Well, how, how much you been in it lately? Well, well. I mean, do you delight in it enough to, like, get in it? <laughs> you know, or do, you know, or is it sort of, you know, you, you go, I, I really like this book, you know. I like it, you know. And it's like I like my Bible cover more than I like my Bible or something, you know. Do you delight in it only in the daytime? One day a week. I mean, you know, or, okay, let's see if we can get you two days a week. And then once you get all the days covered, how about at night? Amen. You know, and do you meditate on it? Do you meditate on it? And I, and I will tell you this. This is just a little thing that I, I found. <clears throat> Meditating on the word is the best way to get it in you. And I'll tell you another thing. This may, may not be true of you, but I'm just going to just, this is, it may, it may help. I found that whatever I'm doing before I go to bed usually ends up being the thing that's on me through the night and what I wake up with. So I try not to watch like horror movies just before I go to bed or whatever. Not only that, but I try, and I, I don't always do this, but I will say I do it a, a fair amount. I try to be meditating on the word when I fall asleep, some scripture, some deal, and I have had it happen so many times where all through the night, because your spirit's awake, it's your, you know, it's your body and your mind and all that that's asleep. I've had the spirit of God just start opening stuff to me. Does that sound crazy? You know? <clears throat> and so uh, I want the word to search me. I, I don't want to search the word, see something, and think I'm righteous. Because did you know that I could, like, not be in the Word for a month and read Psalm 1 and feel good about myself? Now, how do, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, the only way we can do that is if we don't let the Word search us. Okay, now, we're not talking about condemnation. And we're not talking about dwelling on failure. We're not. We're not. We're saying, if you're not open, if you get in the habit of just reading without letting it read you, you understand, searching without letting it search you, you're going to just get hard. You're going to, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean just, or numb, or dull to the word. And so the Lord speaks, and, you know, it, it's almost like no, someone else speaking to you. It doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't impact you. And so I say, you know, there must be a way, there, and this is, there must be a way in which I can stay open to the word of God and let it search me, including showing whether I'm measuring up or not, and yet still stay with the Lord in his good graces. Do you agree with that? There must be a way. <clears throat> in other words, we don't have to just be condemned. And so we say, well, I mean, I, I've had people say to me, well, well, Randy, when I, when I get in the word, it just condemns me and everything. And the de when, when, you know, and then the devil comes in. Anybody ever experienced that? When I get in the word, it just condemns me. And then the devil comes in and takes over. Well, okay, there's something wrong. Because then we say, so I'm not going to get in the word. There's something wrong. That the word of God opens the door to the devil. I mean, that's just a thought. You know. I've had the devil use, use the word. And he, and he can, can't he? I mean, he did to Jesus. Remember, he quoted the scriptures to Jesus. And I've had the devil use the word too. And, and use those scriptures to condemn you. Okay, I, here's, here's a key. This, maybe this will help on that. And maybe you're fine, but someone else this might do is that when the, if the devil's speaking it, he is going to bring you down and try to just bring you to nothing and destroy you and make you feel, you know, like you're not even with God. If the Lord's speaking that, 
God speaks from a position of union, or yes. he speaks from above. You understand what that means? It doesn't just mean up in heaven. It means, number one, above this earth, not number one in importance, but just by reason of one other thing. It means that he's speaking from above this situation, but more importantly, number two would be that he is speaking from a position in Christ and from a position of you being joined with him there. And no man yet ever hated his own flesh, but loves it and cherishes it, even as Christ the church and you're the church. So, I mean, I, I grew up with a father and a stepfather that were just incredibly mean to my mother. Just incredibly mean. But I found out after being around the Lord, the way he is toward his bride is completely different. He is always trying to affirm her, trying to bring her into him. Yes, he might, you know, I don't know of a husband yet that if a wife really messes up on something, he doesn't say, you know, now what you did, this was wrong and you shouldn't have done this, but I love you, I'm with you, we'll work through this. This is just a situation, 100 years from now we won't remember this, right? <laughs> I use that to help me realize how foolish some things are so that I don't go, oh, my God, you know. I go, okay, what's my measure? hundred years from now, this ain't that big a deal. <laughs> <You know? clears throat> so anyway, just this uh, measuring stick of the word of God saying, how deep is your delight? And you have to measure that by what the verse is saying, Okay. I delight in the law of the Lord. I meditate in it day and night. <clears throat> All right. Now, you know, just to make sure that you understand, <clears throat> I probably don't open my Bible every day. Yeah. I know for a fact I've probably gone weeks without searching anything. But it is possible to still meditate on the word, isn't it? Yeah. I know people, and, and I, this is a good thing and a bad thing. I know people that put up scriptures all over their house. <clears throat> all right. Some of those people never get in the word of God because that's it. That's, you know, they cut up the Bible, pull out their favorite pieces, and then tape it up. But on the other hand, for someone whose heart is right, <clears throat> it's kind of good. You know, you're in the mirror, you know, shaving her, you know, hopefully ladies aren't doing too much of that, but fixing her hair. And there's a scripture there. Uh, I, I know Cassie has done this a lot uh, or, uh, earlier in her walk. If there was a scripture that God really just yeah. punched her with, she wouldn't want to let it go. So she'd put it on her mirror so that she'd have to look at it every day. <clears throat> now, I was in their bathroom the other day. And I see that she does the same thing for Ben. <laughs> but it may not be a scripture Ben thought the Lord was dealing with. <laughs> okay. Lest I get in trouble because I think she's back there. <clears throat> All right. Um, let me just read a little bit here. Perhaps some of you can claim a sort of negative purity because you do not walk in the way of the ungodly. But is your delight in the law of the Lord? If not, this blessing does not belong to you. The delight is that, is that delight of heart and pleasure in the law in its instruction above your own ways. And I say that because it really is revealing Christ, but that is instruction above the way that so-and-so walks, the way that so-and-so stands, the way that the scornful sit. Instruction above our ways. <clears throat> okay, so... What does that mean? It means that our way is to talk negatively about something. It's human nature. Especially something either number one we don't like or number two is rubbing us wrong. Okay. The word of the Lord has to be the avenue that begins to change us. I mean, Jesus said, my doctrine is not my own. In other words, I didn't just claim this. This is my Father's in me. And he says that. 
you know, we begin to live by another life and Jesus doesn't sit down with the scornful. Can we get amen? amen? He just doesn't. But he's our life. <clears throat> um, I, when I was in Ireland, I was talking about this and, and uh, a guy came up to me afterwards and he said uh, something like, you know, well, he made a statement, and I said, well, you know, the scriptures say there's neither Greek nor Jew, and we shouldn't be motivated by our culture and our family line and all this stuff. And he said, yeah, but also said there's no longer male and female. And, you know, you can think that's clever, but the right answer, and I didn't say the thing, but the right answer is, yeah, you're not supposed to go by male inclinations or females, it says, but Christ is all and in all. He's so supposed to supersede all of those things. Now, that, that doesn't mean that if you've got a Jewish heritage that you won't, <coughs> you know, speaking strictly for myself, you won't pinch pennies or something. <laughs> <coughs> or if, you, if you're a female, you won't, you know, you know, stand in front of a shop with a dress on and s stand right there where it could look like it's on you or something and go, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to motivation and when it comes to life and when it comes to how you respond, it's Christ. Yes. You, do you see that? It's not the male tendency. It's not the female tendency. It's not the Jewish tendency. It's not the Gentile tendency. You know, I'm, you know I could have said to this guy, well, he also says there's no barbarian. That wouldn't have been Jesus. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so this meditate, this is more than just like, you know, blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay. You know, what's on TV? <clears throat> it's like, who was it, Elisha? And he had his servant, uh, I think it was, I mean, he had his servant go check something. Oh, no, it was Elijah. Go look for the cloud. <clears throat> he goes, look, came back and said, nope, ain't there. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Elijah goes, go look again. Goes back, comes back. Dude, I'm telling you, it's not there. You know, now that's paraphrase. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and he kept sending him back until seven times. And finally, on the seventh time, the guy comes back and says, I see it. That's the way we have to treat the word. Right. You know, there's, there, are, there is treasure here. And you're not going to get it just by reading over it quickly. You're going to get it by meditating on it. <clears throat> One of the things I do is I'll be reading along, and oh, all of a sudden I'll hit something. I go, I know there's something behind that. I know there's something there. Anybody do that where you're just going, I know there's something big there. You know, and you say that to somebody, and they go, well, what is it? And you go, I don't know, but I know, <laughs> I know there's something big there. One of the things I almost always do when I'm in that situation is I say, Lord, if it takes 10 years, 20 years, to, I don't care how long, a week, whatever, <clears throat> reveal what it is in that scripture to me. And as it were, I ponder it from time to time. It'll come back up because, you know, you'll read back over the same thing again. I'll ponder it in my heart. And I have had the Lord many years later reveal those things, and they were just wonderful when he did it. But I often wondered, would he have done that had I not asked and really meant it? You know, I mean, there, let me say something. There really is something to prayer. If it was totally useless, it wouldn't be in the Word of God. <laughs> I like that look, Patty. Here she goes. It was almost like she was saying, well, it ain't worked for me. Not really. It, it, <coughs> it wasn't that at all. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Where do you get that from? Prayer's talking into the air. <coughs> no, but we, you know, I, I say there's something to it. Yes, I don't have the formula. I admit it. I don't have the formula. If I did, I'd give it to you, and you'd be working it, baby. But I don't. So all I can tell you at this stage is I, I think there's something to this prayer thing and therefore use it from time to time. 
And, <laughs> and also what I mean is use it in faith. Amen. You know, oh, Lord, pick so-and-so. You know, and then in your mind you go, I can't, he can't pick so-and-so. I mean, my God, it's messed up. You, God, you don't even know the half of it, of how messed up they are. <laughs> and, you know, the Lord would say, no, you don't know the half of it. They're way worse than what you think. But with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Thank God. Huh? In other words, there's hope. <clears throat> and I believe that, I, I honestly believe that people who search the scriptures need to also pray. Yeah. All right. So, um, Let's see, I just was saying something about that. <clears throat> Meditating is chewing. It's getting the sweetness and nutri nutrients out of it. Now, that doesn't really work for me very well, personally. I can, you can give me a piece of gum, and it won't even be a minute. I, I've never timed it, but it could be as short as 30 seconds. Every ounce of flavor will be out. Is that crazy? It's rubber. No, I mean you're chewing rubber after that point. There's nothing left of it, okay? <clears throat> so my meditating doesn't take as long as some people's. <laughs> I mean, I'm able to just <clears throat> I don't know what the deal is. <clears throat> I do know my wife says I have industrial strength spit. That if there's something all of her cleaners won't get off, she'll say, Randy, could you? And I'll go off, and it'll just go. <clears throat> she said, look. If we ever get in trouble financially, we're going to bottle your spit. <laughs> and I'm going to get that guy with the beard to say, you need new Randy spit. <clears throat> so I, I don't know why I get off on these things. but <clears throat> All right. Um, And, and so there's this contrast, and I remember uh, when, when Israel went into the land. Well, they didn't actually go into the land first. What they did was when they first got there, they sent in 12 spies. Do you remember that? <clears throat> and, uh, and then also when they got to the Jordan, they sent in two spies into Jericho, where Rahab was. And... Uh, there's a difference between a spy in the sense of one who goes to search out the land and a tourist. Okay. A tourist will go to a place, same place that the spy does. And the tourist is going, oh, oh man, look at them flowers. Those are so pretty, you know, and go on. Oh, this, that arch is just beautiful. But the spy, man, he's noticing all kind of stuff that the, the tur tourist doesn't get. And when you go into the Word of God, go in as a spy. Go in to find out the hidden things of the Lord, to, to discover more than the surface, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, a tourist will be drawn to certain things. But one who's gone in to spy out the land, he's drawn to completely different things. A tourist may not remember everything he sees. But a spy, man, he's, he's got to remember. And he's got to not only remember, he's got to assimilate that information and make sure it's in him. He can't just write it down. Somebody can take that away from him. And, and he also guards what he sees. He knows it's important. Whereas a tourist, you know, he may take pictures, whatever, but... <clears throat> Um, so, his delight is in the law of the Lord. I was thinking that a good man, a good man will read the word by day. Amen. He'll read the word by day. And because it's daytime, people may see his good works. But a godly man will do it at night when nobody's looking. Um, I'm sure nobody here has had this problem, but I remember when I was in Bible school, um, there was a particular place 
where um, it was sort of a hangout area, and you could sit on couches and stuff like that. And I, and, but you could see down the hall, and there was a long hall, and you could see down there. And we would talk and laugh and carry on and throw stuff at one another. But I remember, <laughs> um, probably more than once, but I remember seeing an instructor that I really respected and everything. And so since it was a long hall, very long walk coming down to us, I got out my Bible and I was sitting there acting like I was reading it while everybody else was goofing off. Can you believe that? Oh, wretched man that I was. Actually, I was a boy, but that's fine. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that was, you know, I, I was wanting to be known as somebody who was in the Word. You know? So the way that I did that was I used photo ops, <laughs> photo opportunities, <clears throat> when someone would see me to do that. And then I realized this is, you know, this goes completely against what Jesus taught. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, I was, I was the guy who thought I was, I'm the good guy here. And yet I'm doing things opposite of what the Lord wants. No, when you pray, go in your closet where nobody sees you. But your heavenly father will, what, will see in secret. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, he said, meditate in it day and night. Day and night. Day and night. All right, the next, let's go on to the next verse. <clears throat> and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, the first thing you ought to rejoice over is we just actually did another verse. Yeah. We have covered two verses so far this semester. <laughs> and and that's that's glory. That we have truly reached glory land. <laughs> so now we're in the third verse. And God willing. <clears throat> uh, he shall be like a tree planted. Now let me just say this. How many of you know what Peter calls in, in his first and second epistle. What does he call the cross? The tree. So in God's estimation, there's only one tree that's really important. You, know, you can say the tree of life, but that's a, that is significant and reminiscent of and represents the tree of life, the cross. And so um, this is uh, this is the the reality of being planted with the Lord, and it does say that, by the way, and. Uh, Romans 6, I think it's, it's verse 3. Romans 6, 3, it says, if we have been baptized into his death, we shall, if we've been planted in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be uh, in the likeness of his resurrection. <clears throat> um, this tree just keeps on bringing forth fruit, this cross tree that we're planted in and it is planted in us. Now, that is a good statement, isn't it? This tree just keeps on bringing forth fruit and life. But I, I'm going to just tell you something that I've been working on for quite a few years now. I really don't want to find a truth and be able to say it without it having some impact on my own life. Uh, and and I, I will tell you, after I started doing this, I found that there were a lot of things that I had said and would say that were just more pretty neat, but they didn't have any impact on my life. Or like this. <clears throat> um, let's see, I was talking to somebody uh, fairly recently, last couple of months, about this in a, in a different light. <clears throat> they had asked me, what do you know about a certain thing in the tabernacle? I think that's what it was. And I said, oh, um, I don't know. I don't remember, but I have a lot of good stuff written on it somewhere. And we finished the conversation, and I started meditating on that. And I thought, oh, my God, I never saw that 
whatever piece of furniture or anything. I saw it by the Holy Spirit. I saw it by revelation, the revelation of the scriptures. It didn't reveal Christ in me. It revealed Christ in the scriptures. There is a difference. The revelation of the scriptures and Christ revealed in you. I saw the revelation of it in the scriptures and wrote it down. Good for me. So that when the time came for me to teach it, I had good stuff. But when the time came for me to relate it, because it wasn't worked into my life as Christ, as a living reality, uh, that that wasn't just a truth 2,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago, but was meant to be how Christ was worked into the life of the true priesthood and the true temple today, and that was the shadow, and this is supposed to be the real. Does that make, did I say too much too quick? I failed to see Jesus in a manner that it would be worked in my life because if it's worked into you, you're practicing it, right? And if you're practicing it, you remember what you're involved with. You, do you see what I'm saying? Because this was a big deal to me when I saw this. I went, oh God, I'm just, I'm embarrassed and ashamed because I realized that I had gained some really good information but it wasn't life to me, and therefore, really, honestly, it was worthless unless I just wanted to impress somebody with what I had seen. And I, I don't want to do that. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that. I don't want to do that. That is, I just don't believe that brings glory to the Lord. It certainly doesn't help me out. It, it, at best, it puffs me up, or at worst, however you want to look at it, you know. And so... Uh, I have been on a crusade for a while now <laughs> where I just want, I, I want to throw out the things that aren't life and I want the Holy Spirit to begin to rework them in. And we go back to the verse in front of this, meditating, chewing on it, <clears throat> like a cow chewing the cud, you know, you ever seen a cow do that, you know? And uh, I mean, I, I remember sitting there watching one once and I thought, you know, I'm just going to you know, sit here and... Uh, I'm just going to watch how long he chews that. You know, I'm, you know, I'm standing there and thinking, I'm looking at my watch, you know, and I'm leaning on the fence, you know. I mean, he's not swallowing or putting it away or anything. He's just chewing and chewing and chewing. You know, it's kind of like having a staring contest with a statue. You know, you, you blink, you know. <clears throat> You can't win that one, you know. And uh, just to keep meditating <laughs> becomes, what are you thinking right now, Patty, about me? Shame on you for thinking bad thoughts. <laughs> and um, just this thing that... Uh, of really getting it into me as life. And so uh, this thought that it just keeps bringing forth fruit, well, that, that's a great little statement, and it can impact people, can it? But is that tree at work in me? Am I planted into it, and is it bringing forth fruit? That's all that really matters in eternity. Amen. Yes. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Amen? Yeah, and I agree with that because it's, <clears throat> it's really, uh, some people would use another phraseology. They would talk about being in the presence of God. And yes, that's true because it really is being in the presence of God. The example I think of is, you know, <clears throat> Aaron's rod, you know, he was the high priest and you remember that and then he got contested whether he should be the high priest and all that. And so uh, Aaron's rod was nothing but a, a limb, a branch that had been separated from its source. And so God told Moses, look, just tell all these big shots that think they're something because they know as much as Aaron. Tell them all to gather up their rods and this, we're going to set them in there with the Ark of the Covenant. And we're going to see which ones really have life. And so the next day they came back and they went and gathered them all up and stuff like that. And none of, they all were the same except Aaron's rod. And it had brought forth branches and then leaves and then uh, uh, fruit and then flowers or flowers and then fruit, whichever is first in that order of almonds. And it was not cut off. And this is, isn't this what you were just saying? It, you know, you're not cut off. You, you can keep this going all the time. You're not alone. And I will tell you this. I don't know that I have felt alone. Now, it's been lonely being one who preaches Christ and been crucified and under attack and all that kind of, there's been loneliness. To, but I don't know that I've ever felt alone from the beginning of God revealing his son in me because... It's not I anymore. It's Christ. And, and I believe that. Here's the problem. I believe that. <laughs> you know, I believe it. And I'm going to hold on to it in spite of me or you. You know. I may get discouraged, but I'm not going to quit on God. I may get discouraged, but I'm not going to quit on the cross. Or the resurrection. Okay? Amen. Amen. And then, I, you know, I noticed that it says he should be like a tree planted. It didn't say like a wild tree that just grew up somewhere. This, uh, a planted tree is a whole different situation altogether. It's, a planted tree is considered property. You know, it's cultivated, it's secure, it's, uh, you know, secure from being uprooted it, it belongs to God and uh, you know the Lord said uh, in Matthew he said every tree which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up <coughs> by the rivers of water he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water so that if one river fails Because it said rivers, really. Out of your innermost being shall flow river, rivers. Shall be like a tree planted by the, is that singular or plural? It's plural. The rivers. Did you know that sometimes you can dry up in a certain area? But God will keep them flowing because you're planted by more than one river. And these rivers are going to, you know, even if one fails, and God will test you like that because he did Elijah when, when he put him under the brook, and remember the water was there and all that kind of stuff, and then the brook dried up and the ravens quit coming. You remember that? You know, we say, I'm of God. Why are you drying up the brook? You could have kept it going, you know. Well, he's not just trying to do miracles for us so that we believe in him. The true belief, real honest belief, is when everything is against you yeah. and you still believe. You know, you, you know somebody said, oh, man, I'm in the fight of my life. I, you know, I must really be out of whack with God. I'm thinking, you know, you're in the perfect place. God loves you. You are, you are in a city. What, what does he say? Peter said, I'm <clears throat> probably going to get this wrong. He said that, that the, that the, Testing of your faith and the proof, the, the word testing there is the proof of it under test. Mm 
or trial is more precious to God than silver and gold. He loves us when we stand there and we go, you know, I mean, I've done this. Lord, I'm a mess. I can't seem to, you know, get it together and chase off these feelings in my soul and, and uh, all this freak out. But, oh, God, I love you and I'm with you and I'm going to stand with you even through this. And he goes, that's what I wanted to hear. Do you believe that? <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the Lord. And it's it's hard, but I'll tell you what, you know, here's okay, here's the alternative. Well, I've messed up in this area and I ain't right in this area. I ought to just quit. Well, you ought to, but you you won't. Because your heart is with the Lord. Even if your soul, your mind, your body does, you know stuff, yeah, you know. Your heart is with the Lord, and you're going to go on through this. And God, he's not first and foremost concerned about, you know, bodily functions or whatever, all the stuff we get off on. He's not first concerned. He's not. He's, what is he first concerned with? Your heart. Keep your heart with him. He'll take care of the rest. Seek first the kingdom of God. He'll add all. Do you believe that? But you know what? Sometimes you can't do anything about it. He doesn't take it away, and he doesn't fix it, and he doesn't give you the power to overcome it. He, well, he doesn't. Every one of us know that's true. We've all been in those places. He just wants you to say, Lord, I can't fix it, but I still love you. You know? I'm still with you. Yes. Where shall I go? Will you leave me? You have the words of eternal life, and it's the, it's the eternal life. See, I haven't got to it yet, but these rivers go up inside of this tree and will not only sustain it, but will cause it to grow. But there is not, there is not a big tree out here that you planted one day and like six days later, you know, like a pecan tree, it was huge and bringing forth pecans or apples or whatever. You know, there is not a tree like that. And if you're going to be like a tree, you're going to be like a, taking a long time, my man. <laughs> it's, it's just going to take a while. And that's, you know, I mean, aren't the scriptures wonderful? Because the very next verse says... And he shall bring forth fruit in its season. Okay? And, and so I thought, okay, when you're, when you're under trial, you'll bring forth patience. When somebody's hurting, you'll bring forth love. When, uh, you see what I'm saying? There's, there's all kind of different fruit in its season. In fact, let me see. I think I wrote that. Yeah, the man who delights in God's word brings forth patience in the time of suffering, faith in the day of trial, joy in the hour of blessing, gratitude in prosperity, zeal in opportunity. Fruitfulness should be seasonable. These are virtues to be exhibited at a certain season. Somebody says, make me more loving. You know what they mean? They mean that I walk around all the time going, oh, love, love. Oh, you know, I just love all the time. That's when we say make me more loving, we're not saying, Jesus, you are love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness and faith and patience and you're, you're all these things and bring forth your fruit through this branch in your season when we need those things. You may not feel very loving when you're supposed to be feeling patient. 
right? I mean, and then, but we, but what do we do? We condemn ourselves, we're beating ourselves. Oh my God, I don't feel any love, you know? I remember that time we went to Mardi Gras, one of the first times, and we're down on the streets, and we, we'd go, we'd wade into Bourbon Street in those early days, my God, we'd wade into, and it was just like, you'd have to hold on to one another, and the crowd would almost break the chain apart, uh, and the movement, and the tightness, and the debauchery, and I mean, I, I remember feeling something warm going down my leg. Somebody peed on me right there with people all around me. They couldn't get out to pee, but they just peed right there, you know? And, you know, and I remember thinking, you know, especially after that incident, I, I don't love these people. I said, I said, God, get me out of here. This is, this is sick. I, I hate this. Get me out of here. And I said, I don't love these people. And I, I felt the Spirit of God say to me, you're not down here to give them your love. You're down here to give them my love. Amen. And I went, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. You know, this, the, the whole thing that brought me down there wasn't my love. It was his. You know, and that, that changed everything. I was able to go on, you know, <clears throat> because it's not about me. It's not about my fruit. And if it's not about my fruit, therefore it's not about my failures. That's a, you know what, that's a tough one for, for righteous people to swallow. <coughs> what I mean is, because we, we're, we're righteous. He's not made unto us righteous. We say we're righteous. And so when we fail, oh, I fail, you know, all this kind of stuff, folks. Let him bring forth his fruit in his season. Trust that you're in the vine. Trust that you're a branch. Trust that he knows what he's doing. Yeah, you're going to fail. Yeah, you're going to fall short. Yeah, you're in Christ. Yeah, you're raised up. Yes, you're seated in Christ. That's settled. It's not a question of should I quit God. It's, it's a question of should you quit you. And what I mean by that isn't quit doing those things. I mean quit thinking about you as separate from him. Quit it. Stop it. It's wrong. It's wrong. It goes against the gospel. It does. It goes against the gospel. I'm going to, I don't know when I'm going to share it. God knows, but I've got something good on this from the tabernacle that I got working in my life. <laughs> and I don't think I'll ever forget it. So... Anyway, I, I'll, I'll be sharing it sooner or later here. <coughs> That's actually not that funny. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read some here so that we can... Uh, we are to redeem the time, for the Lord reckons the times which pass over us and puts them to our account. The use of time is improved by being placed by a place of watering. When near much water, we grow faster and bring forth more fruit. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. You, you say, okay. Now, answer me this. Do you not agree with planting something or getting something? And just think, of any, has anybody ever bought a house plant and then remembered that you'd you know, take it home and then water it and then remember like two weeks later that you got a house plant? Yeah. <laughs> and you go see it and it's like, <laughs> you don't like me, do you? You know? <clears throat> Um, but if you've ever planted something that you were excited about, tomatoes in your garden outside your door or something like that, and you make sure, and you go plant, and you, you're really, man, you're watering that, and I don't mean overwatering, but I mean, you know, you're on it when it comes to the water. It's going, yay, I'm happy. And it starts, you know, tomatoes start coming out and all this kind of stuff. You go, cool, man, this is great. And I got the healthiest tomato plant around. <laughs> Why is it so? Is it just random? And the answer is no. It's not randomly doing that. It's by rivers of water, if you will. All right. How many of you know what I just said is true <laughs> with plants? All right. Is it not supposed to be true in your spiritual life? Somebody says, why did you raise up a Bible school? There's plenty of better Bible schools. Your Bible school ain't any good. I did it for Jesus. I did it for you. 
I did it so there could be watering other than Sunday morning, right? Other than the Sunday morning watering because I had so many people coming and saying, we're starving to death. We want to hear this message. We can't seem to get it when you come to our, our city once, you know, every six months or something like that. We need more of this. Is there a place where I can get this? Well, at the time we had a church and we actually had people come. And they'd go, okay, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. And I think maybe we had another night. Something, yeah. Still wasn't enough. Somebody said, I'm not going to make it without more watering. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to bring forth fruit. I'm not getting this. That's not getting in me. I need a place that is by waters where the water's flowing a lot, you know. And, you know, you think, you think you're not doing good here. You ought to try it without it. <laughs> there is a flow that is there and will get in you whether you fully know it or not. What is it? There's, there's a poem, and it says something like that. For those who, who feel like, the Lord's not with me, I'm not getting it, or, you know, anybody ever said that? You know, well, I'm not getting it, it's not happening, and whatever. And uh, it, it, it's, it's like all of a sudden, he beg he's, he's just there. Not at the moment you're worrying, but all of a sudden later, you just go, man, he's there. Or you might you might run into somebody and you start sharing and all these rivers start yeah. coming out and going, I didn't even know I got that out of that class. That's a lot. You know. The poem says, He entereth. I know not how by some secret no, he entereth by some secret stare. I know not, knowing only that he is there. He entereth. Some secrets there I know not, knowing only he's there. I have no explanation. Well, there is an explanation. You have been by rivers, and those rivers will do their job. I just realized I feel like Star Trek, the next generation, because I keep going back to <laughs> Captain Picard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, I, I do want to finish. I'm getting signals. Oh, God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all this done. Maybe I should just try to read this. How much time do we have? Two minutes. Oh, Lord. In his season, we, okay, let's see. Uh, the use of time is improved by being placed by a oh, place of watering. When... Near much water, we grow faster and bring forth fruit. Uh, we are a tree, not just a Christian worker. We are instant in season and out. The good Christians have their stated days and stated times, certain works and certain places to which they stick so closely, such as church. Sunday belongs to the Lord. But we are neither Jew or Greek, nor bond or free, barbarian, nor any other particular person. We are not apple, orange, or pear. We are not bound by designations in order to do, as I said, not apples or oranges, but many want to specialize. They get more attention. We want people to say what a wonderful man of prayer he is or what a faithful servant he is. In other words, specializing instead of it being Christ. Can I get amen? Amen. You know, and so if this tree brings forth seven different fruits or 12 different fruits in its season, if it does, we, we choose one of them and choke out everything else. <laughs> we don't let it cry. And it does it in its season so that, you know, I need to shut up because time is ticking away. His leaf also shall not wither. Not simply shall his fruit be preserved, but his leaf also. He shall neither lose his beauty nor fruitfulness. He describes the fruit before he does the leaf. We preach what we've been practicing. And I say that because the scripture says Jesus began both to do and teach. Do is first and then teaches. He's, he's got it worked in him. Then he tells others about it. Uh, that's uh, Acts 1.1. 1, 1. Luke 24.19 says, which, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word. 
first it is already worked in us, so we're practicing what we preach, or we're preaching now what we've been practicing. Some only profess the word of doctrine, but not put forth the fruits of life. Christ cursed the fig tree, which bore no fruit. The Lord's trees are all evergreens. No winter's cold can destroy. Yeah, it can mess with you, but it can't destroy you. There, you know, I don't know why I'm rushing madly. How much time we got left? 32 seconds, zero time. I'm going to stop. It's, you know, it's not like we're actually going to finish this psalm this semester. <laughs> and the good news is there's only six verses. All right, let's pray. Father, we just ask you to break forth the bread of life into these things and then into our lives so that we know of whom we have believed. We know the whom of it, not the doctrine of it, Father. We long for your son. We long for the reality of truth and not just truths. Help us, Lord. Help us. We do look to you. We love you. And we continue after you with all the heart that we have. All the strength, not all strength, but the strength that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, take a break before we move.